By 1920, everyone knew George Gershwin, the young hit songwriter. People wondered what kind of music the bold, creative composer would write next. But George already knew. Jazz. As a boy, he roller skated to New York's Harlem neighborhood to hear the smooth, syncopated jazz rhythms in clubs and restaurants. Most serious musicians thought jazz wasn't music at all. The notes were restless, untamed. The rhythms were wild, unpredictable. Band leader Paul Whiteman loved George's wild, restless music. Determined to prove hip musicians like George were playing important music, Whiteman planned a concert. An experiment in modern music. He was sure people would go crazy for this new jazzy razzmatazz. George set out to compose a dazzling, daring piece for the concert. One that showed jazz was exciting, limitless, free. He scratched his head and paced the floors and scratched and paced some more. He'd barely written a single note when he had to leave town for the opening of his new musical, Sweet Little Devil. The train's steely wheels creaked into motion. Rattle bang. Its huge wheels rolled faster and faster. Rattle bang, rattle bang. Faster still, the heavy wheels seemed to fly over the metal track. Rattle bang, rattle bang, rattle bang. And that's when George heard it. Music, notes, rhythms, slow and steady, fast and furious. The train noises created new melodies in his head. He thought about the old familiar music he loved, classical, ragtime, jazz, and the blues. The different styles of music blended together into one beautiful rhapsody. George heard his concerto. He even saw the notes on the paper. Back home, George finished his concerto. It was just as he'd planned. Daring and razzmatazz dazzling. It was a musical kaleidoscope of America's melting pot. It was Rhapsody in Blue.